Wow. Isn't this the most beautiful coral reef you have ever seen? Wouldn't it be a once-in-a-lifetime chance to go snorkeling and diving there? Unfortunately, it is too late for that, because this reef is now dead. And what you see here, in fact, is not a healthy, vibrant coral reef, but a reef in the midst of severe bleaching and on the brink of dying from heat stress. This reef now looks similar to this coral graveyard, because the severely bleached, brightly fluorescent corals would have succumbed to death after only a short period of time. My name is Verena Schöpf, and I have been fascinated by coral reefs since my childhood. Ever since I first went snorkeling on the coral reefs in the Red Sea, I knew that I wanted to study these amazing underwater cities teeming with life. But I would have never guessed that within just 20 years, coral reefs would be dying on regional to global scales, and that I would ultimately end up witnessing their decline and studying ways of how to save them. What happened here? How can an entire reef just die off? How can a healthy, vibrant coral reef turn into a ghostly white or a brightly fluorescent color explosion and then just die? If you're concerned now, well, you should be. Because this did not just occur on a single isolated reef somewhere far away. This happens over and over again on coral reefs all around the world. In Australia, for example, the Great Barrier Reef has already been hit by mass bleaching four times since the 1980s, most recently in 2016 and just earlier this year. And coral reefs in Western Australia have not been spared from mass bleaching, so they were badly affected in 2010-11 and in 2016. This is a truly global issue. And this map shows you the footprint of the third and longest global coral bleaching event. It started in 2014 and then spread to coral reefs all around the world. And it only recently ended. If we want to understand what coral bleaching is and the global coral reef crisis that threatens the very existence of coral reefs, we first need to take a closer look at the coral itself. What is a coral, actually? Is it a rock, a plant, or even an animal? The answer might surprise you, because a coral is actually all of this. A coral is an animal closely related to anemones and jellyfish but they also produce limestone skeletons, and they live in very close partnership, or so-called symbiosis, with microscopic algae. And it is, in fact, these algae that give the coral the healthy brown-greenish color that you can see in the photo on the left. These algae use sunlight to make food and then share the food with the coral. In return for food, the coral provides protection from predators and gives them key nutrients. So it's a pretty good deal. Unfortunately, corals are very sensitive to sudden changes in water temperature. And even just one or two degrees above the normal summer temperatures for short periods of time is enough to cause trouble. So now you can understand why coral reefs are among those ecosystems that are most threatened by climate change and global warming. The problem is that when the water stays too hot for too long, the symbiosis between the algae and the coral breaks down, the coral expel the algae in large numbers, and that leads to a dramatic loss of color, a process referred to as coral bleaching, as you can see in the photo in the middle. So bleaching is like a severe case of heat stroke. But corals get most of their food from their algae, and so bleached corals are essentially starving, consuming their own energy reserves until, well, 
until the Ida, the water temperatures return back to normal and the coral has a chance to recover, or, well, until they kind of run out of energy and die. Well, this is certainly tragic. Some of you might be asking at this point, why should we care about coral reefs? Yes, they're certainly beautiful, but if you're not into snorkeling or diving, why do we need healthy coral reefs? Coral reefs are often referred to as the rainforests of the sea because they are biodiversity hotspots. But they also provide immense benefits to the economy and the society. The Great Barrier Reef alone, for example, contributes $6 billion to the Australian economy each year and supports 64,000 jobs. With most Australians living close to the coast, it is also important to know that coral reefs protect coastlines from storms and erosion. And last but not least, coral reefs may well be the pharmacies of the future. Novel biomedical compounds continue to be discovered on, in coral reef organisms, and some of these compounds have actually shown great promise in the fight against cancer, for example. Losing coral reefs would therefore not just be an ecological disaster, but it would have dramatic consequences for all of us. But despite this global coral reef crisis, I have hope for the future of coral reefs. And here's one of the reasons why. So some of you are probably wondering right now what I'm seriously proposing that Superman will save the world's coral reefs. Although I love the idea, we all know that superheroes unfortunately do not exist. We will have to tackle climate change if we want our children and grandchildren to live in a world where coral reefs can still exist. But what makes me hopeful is that coral reefs around the world, including myself, have recently discovered so-called super corals, even here in Western Australia. Super corals are not invincible superheroes. They just don't exist. But super corals are like super athletes. These athletes are all human, yet they have the ability to swim or run much faster than almost anybody else. Super corals are just like that. While they may not be moving very much, they have the ability to cope with climate change better than most other corals. So that means that we can learn from them how they, and possibly also other corals, can achieve this tolerance to cope with heat stress and climate change. And it also means that we can look into their potential use for proactive conservation approaches, such as assisted migration, where we would take them to other degraded reefs to restore them and increase the resistance of the reef to climate change. Let me give you some examples of where we can find super corals. In the Northern Red Sea, super corals exist that do not bleach even when temperatures are several degrees above the normal summer temperatures. Remember, most corals already bleach when temperatures are just one or two degrees warmer than usual, so that's quite remarkable. Or in the Persian Arabian Gulf, the world's hottest coral sea, corals have the highest absolute coral bleaching thresholds, close to 35 degrees. Most corals living in the tropics bleach when temperatures get close to 30 degrees. So this shows us that corals have the ability to cope with extremely high temperatures if given enough time to adapt. But it is, of course, extremely exciting that we have super corals right here in WA, in the remote Kimberley region. The Kimberley region is one of the toughest places for coral reefs in this world, because this region has the world's largest tropical tides, up to 12 meters. 
The giant tides of the Kimberley create many fascinating phenomena. For example, these massive tidal currents or even waterfall waves. But they also mean that at low tide, shallow corals that call this place home get exposed to air for up to one or two hours, and they experience extreme daily temperature swings. And then, when the tide rushes back in, they suddenly find themselves back in 10-meter water depth. And while they certainly appreciate being back in the water, that water is completely unlike the crystal clear waters that we typically associate with coral reefs. So I think it's pretty clear that this is as extreme as it gets when it comes to coral reefs. When I started studying the coral reef of the Kimberley a few years ago, we knew very little about them. It was unclear whether these corals were more resistant to bleaching because of the extreme environment that they live in, or whether they were barely surviving there. So I conducted a heat stress experiment and have found, indeed, that the corals from the most extreme places, the tide pools, are more resistant to heat stress and take longer to bleach than other corals. So that was amazing news, because I had essentially found super corals. But then came the year 2016, the hottest year on record. When I came back to my study sites, it was just devastating to see white corals everywhere I looked. And the Kimberley region was particularly bad affected, and even the Great Barrier Reef on the other side of the continent suffered one of the worst bleach events in its recorded history. This served as a stark reminder that even super corals are not immune to climate change and these marine heat waves. When I went back to my study site six months after the bleaching to see how many of the corals had recovered or died, I have to admit that I wasn't too hopeful. And indeed, in the places where I knew that the corals weren't that resistant to heat stress, most of the corals had died and were now overgrown by algae and other organisms. It was just heartbreaking. But, in the tide pools where the super corals live, it was a completely different story. Most of the corals and the tide pools had completely recovered just six months after the bleaching, and the reef now looked as healthy as it did before the bleaching. So that was really remarkable. So here is my take-home message. Corals have a remarkable ability to cope with even the most extreme environmental conditions, as here in the Kimberley. But time is critical. We need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions now to slow down global warming and give coral reefs a chance to survive. So, can you, you here in this room, can you do something to help save the world's coral reefs? Yes, all of you can take action on climate change. For example, did you know that the meat industry contributes significantly to greenhouse gas emissions? So cutting down meat consumption or going vegetarian is a great way to reduce your carbon footprint. Switch to renewable energies. How many of you in here already have solar panels installed or drive electric cars? Yeah, see, you're already helping to save the world's coral reefs. Last but not least, demand political action from your government, because tackling climate change requires global action. Together, we can save the world's coral reefs. Thank you.